Stephen Dank was involved in the AFL with the Essendon Bombers as a sports scientist. In late 2011, Dank was hired by Essendon to provide supplements for the players in order to aid in muscle recovery. Dank was injecting 38 players with a banned substance known as Thymosin Beta-4. The program ran by Dank was kept secret from the club's head doctor at the time, Dr. Bruce Reed, and ultimately discovered to be against ASADA rules. As a result of leading the program, Dank was disgraced and found guilty on the 26th of April 2015, and as a result of this, Dank was handed a lifetime ban from the AFL. Thank you to everyone who watched my last video. Over the past month, we've had over 100,000 unique viewers to the channel. If you're one of those who has not yet subscribed, please click the subscribe button as it helps out the channel heaps. In 1910, the Blues were the best team in the league after winning three premierships between 1906 to 1908, losing the 1909 premiership by two points against South Melbourne and finding themselves prime for the grand final after winning the minor premiership in 1910 with 15 wins and three losses that season. Carlton would find themselves up against South Melbourne in the semi-final that year. However, there were suspicions that three players from the Blues in Alex Lang, Doug Gillespie and Doug Fraser were going to be running a bye or in other words, trying to throw the game. Their teammate in George Backey reported to the club that he was approached by a certain city shopkeeper who told him that he had three or four men playing in the last final match and that he had paid each of them 50 pounds after the match to throw the game. A league investigation cleared Gillespie but found Lang and Fraser guilty. They were suspended for five years. The investigation brought a number of players forward from different clubs who acknowledged that they had also been approached but had refused the bribes to underperform. The reported bribery attempts seemed to be aimed at players due to play South Melbourne. It was rumoured that the South Melbourne president, Henry Skinner, was involved. Skinner admitted that he had promised the 23 men on the South Melbourne training list £10 per man if the club succeeded in getting to the final four. He pledged that he knew nothing of this shopkeeper who was at the centre of the bribery allegations. Nothing was proved and the source of the bribes was never identified. Fraser and Lang would ultimately get a suspension of 99 matches. Elijah Taylor, drafted in the 2019 draft, made his senior debut with the Sydney Swans in Round 7 of 2020. During the season, Sydney were under COVID protocols in Western Australia, where players were housed in a bubble to ensure they could play football. However, Taylor would be found guilty of breaking the COVID protocols by allowing his partner to enter the hotel they were being housed in. This resulted in the Sydney Swans being fined $50,000 with $25,000 suspended. Elijah would face a suspension for the remainder of the season. A month later, in September, he would be formally stood down by the Swans for domestic abuse charges and formally part ways with the Swans at the end of November after only playing four games. Ben Cousins is widely regarded as one of the best players to come out of Western Australia. He played his first AFL game at age 17 and would win the Brownlow medal for the Eagles in 2005 as well as Premiership in 2006. Cousins' career and life would take a turn for the worst when it was discovered that he was abusing recreational drugs. Cousins would be suspended from the West Coast Eagles indefinitely and become admitted into rehab in California. He would return to the club with tighter restrictions requiring him to submit regular drug tests to ensure that he was not infringing his contractual obligations. On the 16th of October 2007, Cousin's car was stopped and searched. He was arrested for drug possession and refused to submit to a blood test. And on 19th of November, he was banned from playing senior football for 12 months by the AFL Commission for bringing the game into disrepute and he was delisted by West Coast formally on the 30th of November. The Eagles officials said that he would never appear in an Eagles Guernsey again, and AFL CEO at the time, Andrew Dimitriou, said it would be extremely difficult for Cousins to ever return to the AFL. However, Cousins was able to return to the AFL with Richmond in 2009, where he played for two seasons before retiring at the end of 2010. Jaden Stephenson, 
is one of the AFL's rising stars, currently playing for North Melbourne. In 2019, Stephenson, while playing for Collingwood, would be handed the toughest player penalty ever under the wagering rules. Stephenson was found guilty of putting bets on himself and other players to kick goals and reach disposal milestones. The bets altogether added up to $36, but that was enough for the AFL to hand down a 22 match ban for Stephenson. However, 12 of the games would be suspended, meaning if he showed good behavior, then he would only have to serve 10 matches, which was the case. Stephenson would also be made to pay a $20,000 fine, as well as be ineligible to play any competitive football, whether it be AFL or VFL. Josh Thomas and Lachlan Keefe were both on Collingwood's list in 2015, when they tested positive to clenbuterol, which is a fat-burning drug commonly used by bodybuilders preparing for competitions. The pair were adamant that they unknowingly took the drug and believed it may have been slipped into their systems after a night out. Despite their story, the AFL found them guilty of infringing on the anti-doping rules and handed them a two-year fine, which was backdated to the start of the year. However, neither of the players would be eligible to play football until 2017. They would also have to each pay the Collingwood Football Club fines of $50,000. In September 2019, Junior Rioli would find himself in hot water when he was suspended indefinitely and ruled out of the West Coast Eagles finals campaign for 2019 when he was caught swapping his urine sample with a clean sample that was inside a Gatorade bottle to attempt to hide a positive test for marijuana use. Rioli admitted that he and other club members were using marijuana. Rioli was eventually tried and handed a two-year suspension in March 2021, which was backdated to 2019. He was able to return to play in 2022 and is currently playing for Port Adelaide after being traded at the end of 2022.